The Quest 2 has been an outstanding achievement. Earlier this year, The Verge had quoted that the system had surpassed over 20 million units sold. To put that in perspective, that's roughly the same amount as the Xbox Series S and X combined. Its successor, the Quest 3, is right around the corner and the VR industry has never been in a better shape. In hindsight, the last three years has been very successful for the Quest brand, but it wasn't all that easy. The Quest 2 launched with a Facebook requirement which caused uproar. Games were promised that either came half-baked or downright never came at all. But amongst the various bumps and price increase, it's been a very fun three years. So as we eagerly anticipate the Quest 3 next week, let's look back on the device that has sent VR into the mainstream. And I'm excited to share with all of you Oculus Quest 2. On September 16th, 2020, Meta unveiled its successor to the Oculus Quest 1. The Quest 2 was lighter, cheaper, coming in at $299, $100 less than the Quest 1 and considerably less than anything of its kind. Its Snapdragon XR2 chip was only found in one other VR headset and that was $1,500. It was truly a bargain and it needed to be. In case you didn't remember, the world was facing a global pandemic, the economy was unstable, and VR, well, let's just say to many, VR was still some futuristic tech they saw in Ready Player One. Oculus Quest 2, which is what it was called at the time, rocked two SKUs, 64 gig and 256 gig. I was dumb enough to get the 64 gig, thinking that games will never reach the size of the system itself, something you should be cautious about with your Quest 3 purchase, but that's another video. The announcement was far from perfect. Meta, Facebook at the time, faced backlash when it announced the Quest 2 required a Facebook login. Gone was the Oculus account you'd use on Quest 1. Due to Facebook's constant battles with privacy, this caused an outrage on the internet. One, because it was the internet, but also there were valid areas of concern. Forcing users to have to sign up to a social media platform to use an unrelated VR headset raised eyebrows on just why the Quest 2 was so low in price to begin with. Facebook were also battling court cases at the time. In fact, they settled for a lawsuit of $725 million, which they were accused of giving third parties access to user data without their consent. The Facebook requirement didn't affect my decision. I was sold and on launch, I picked up the 64 gigabyte Quest 2, the official carrying case and ultimately the elite strap, since the stock head strap was complete garbage. Speaking of garbage, I also had to pick up a VR cover since the faceplate was thin, cheap and just awful. I picked up three games to start. The first was Vader Immortal. This on rails three part Star Wars adventure initially launched with the Quest 1 exclusively. However, I've been so eager to play it that episode one had to be my first game. I still remember the first time I was confronted by Vader, his huge stature and presence sent a chill down my spine. I was sold. Then I picked up Walkabout Minigolf, another Quest 1 title that I instantly fell in love with. Its charming art style, well-designed courses and accessibility makes it a game that I still go back on a weekly basis. It's not surprising how well this game has done and how far they've come from its initial four courses. Finally, I picked up a Quest 2 launch title, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Gosh, I played this game almost every night when I was free. It was VR immersion at its finest back then, armed with a compelling story, great melee combat physics, and plenty of horrors along the way. It was also the biggest story game on the Quest 2, featuring a full 10 and a half hour campaign something unprecedented in the mobile VR space. So that was my launch. I loved the system from day one and I hardly went back to flat screen gaming at all. The games, however, did start to dry up. Jurassic World Aftermath and Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge were highly anticipated holiday titles. However, it was announced closer to release that they are just part one and the second half of the games were released next year. This was due to production delays as a result from the pandemic, which was a totally viable reason. It was just handed poorly. They should have had the words part one in the title so buyers knew exactly what they were getting into. But all of us pretty much thought that we were getting the full experience. Now COVID continued to cause content issues over the next couple of years. 
The Oculus Gaming Showcase was announced for the first time on April 21st, 2021. This was Meta's take on the Nintendo Direct. The first showcase was a decent start, with the standout title being Resident Evil 4, a faithful reimagining of arguably the best Resident Evil game, built from the ground up in VR, except for the weird movie-like cutscenes. 2022 came around and that year's showcase started off with a disclaimer, which basically said that there are not many games to show, but don't worry, they'll come in the future. It was disappointing, sure, but I'm a big believer of letting the devs take as long as they want to deliver high quality titles. Rather that than getting a game on time, which is just garbage and adds fuel to the VR haters out there. It was the gaming showcase earlier this year, which was a hit. VR studios had finally caught up, Meta had so much content that they even did a pre-show which was nothing but games after games after games. And on top of that, the Quest 3 was announced shortly before the show went live. Heavy hitters like Asgard's Wrath 2, Bulletstorm VR, hell, we finally even got to learn about the new Assassin's Creed Nexus, the VR title that we've been waiting for since the launch of the Quest 2. Just don't worry about Splinter Cell, that got canned. It seems like Meta finally hit their stride with the showcase. It's become something that we look forward to every single year. So let's take a quick look back on some of the best games. In fact, we'll keep this short. We'll stick with three of the top titles. This could be a whole video in itself. So let's just get straight into it. First up is Demio. This tabletop fantasy title was and still is a mega hit for the system. You can play on your own, but it's made for co-op in mind. There's been several DLC adventures released for free. It fully supports hand tracking and you can even paint figures in the game. It's truly a blast. You should definitely go check it out. The next is Red Matter 2, an immersive puzzle adventure title, which is set in space. It has mind-blowing visuals. Seriously, I'm looking forward to what it looks like on Quest 3. This game can be played seated, and like its predecessor, it's actually an excellent first game for new Quest owners due to its clever controls and movement which prevent motion sickness. And finally, Medal of Honor, the greatest game that nobody played because it was 41 gigabytes and it couldn't fit on most people's quests. <laughs> Honestly, go play Medal of Honor, it's great, and I did a video about it up here that you can watch after this. Quickly, us 64 gigabyte users started to regret our cost saving decision. Meta knew it too, so in the summer of 2021, they doubled the storage to 128 gigabytes, keeping the price at a bargain 299. Come the following year though, Meta joined companies like Sony and increased the cost of the hardware by $100 as a response to inflation. There was some backlash of course, but to be fair, $299 was a little low to begin with, so the increased price of $399 seemed fair. Nevertheless, to justify this increase, Meta started to do bundles. The first one started off with Beat Saber and Resident Evil 4. Then later on, they replaced that SKU with a Space Pirate Trainer and Golf Plus version. Which begs the question, where are all the special edition headsets? The PlayStation, Switch, and Xbox all had special editions across the years, but the Quest 2 has just stayed plain, boring, white. I wish they could at least come out with some official skins. It would be cool to see an Assassin's Creed Ezio inspired design, you know, with the red and the white and you know, you get the idea. Now, one of the biggest issues with the MetaQuest system is its software and even to this day, the operating system still lacks key features. Now, to be fair to them, they have been updating the Quest on a regular basis, including huge features like 90 hertz refresh rate, fitness tracking with Move, cloud backups. Actually, out of all of the updates, the most significant has got to be hand tracking. This control method used to be a gimmick. A vision from the Tony Stark world, which was way too flimsy, needed to work in perfect lighting and required your hands to be placed right in front of you. Oh, and they couldn't cross together too. That would break the whole system. And after that, even if you got the right conditions, it still hardly worked well. However, Meta has been a constant work over the years and must say hand tracking has got to a place where it works almost flawlessly, like it's very impressive. You should definitely give hand tracking games a shot now. It's actually so good that they even ditched the IR rings on the Quest V controllers because they can now track your hands just as well. But back to the operating system, out of all the amazing updates, the user experience needs some serious work. Games and apps are hard to find on the system. User suggestions are so far off that it makes you stop taking Netflix suggestions for granted. And it doesn't stop there. Throughout the years, there have been guardian issues, frequent crashes, and sometimes apps won't even update unless you restarted the headset altogether. 
It's not been smooth sailing for the Quest user experience and I hope the Quest 3 can start off with the bang with all of its extra processing power. So there we have it, a brief look at the last three years and how far we've come. It's not perfect, but what the Quest 2 has done for VR will be talked about for years to come. It's created millions of new VR users, provided a platform for new social experiences and connected others who would normally be miles away over a game of golf, a movie in big screen or fitness class in FitXR. The Quest 2 is truly the first mainstream VR headset and it set the precedent of what's to come. And with double the power and meta backing this thing all the way, I cannot wait to see what the Quest 3 does from next week onwards. Now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments below if you have any Quest 2 specific memories. What was the first time like when you tried it and have you given it to friends and family and have they tried the device? Do you have any favorite games? Let me know in the comments below and hit the like and the subscribe because I'll be covering the next generation, the Quest 3 from next week onwards and beyond. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next week.